Hello, welcome back to the studio. Today, I am working on my prop. My big, large, giant telephone prop, which I was working on in the last video. I decided that the template was too big, far too big for what I wanted, because the telephone part of the prop was gonna be even bigger. And the studio is fairly sized, but to shoot this, I have to shoot it against this wall. And there's a big beam going across here because it's an old converted pigsty slash barn. It means that I would not, have been, would not have logistically been able to shoot this how I would have wanted to. Decided to make it a bit smaller, use the polystyrene sheets that I had existing and just went for it. We kind of just winged it and I was like, right, we'll just make a template and if it doesn't work, we can always buy some more. We made a template and it worked and I'm really happy. So we haven't got too far, but I'll leave all the clips now of us making this template. So first thing I really want to do is just dismantle, in fact, let me just put the lights on. I'm going to dismantle this because it's just way too big. I liked this template, so I'm going to recreate this on the, on the polystyrene. And Jack was going to come and help me, so he might come in. Let me go see if he wants to. Jack, are you there? I don't know where he is, but he'll come in, I'm sure. This has been outside behind the shed, hence why it's so dirty. So I do need to wipe this, and I'm anticipating a very messy studio today. If you know me by now, I like to talk through what I'm doing, so this helps me. Oh, so I've got two, I think three pieces all the same size. Tape measure, see what this is look, gonna look like. Maybe that'll work. I'm gonna just go for it. Why not? Am I, am I doing this? Yeah, let's just do it. Hey! Say hello. <laughs> so I was just trying to decide whether to just cut a template out of this, see if it works, and if it doesn't, order some more. Pippi, you can move our way. You can have to move our way so I don't cut your face off. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, I'm getting good at this. That's quite satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, genius. The bit that goes on the bottom goes on the front. So it elongates it a little bit. And then I can curve that round. Much better size. Right, very happy with this structure. It looks great. Got some grip fill, which we're gonna stick it together with, and then I'm gonna fill it with expanding foam on the gaps, and then we're gonna carve it down probably tomorrow and then paper mache it. So, welcome back to now. As I said in those clips, I was going to potentially use paper mache. So over the weekend, I've been researching how to create smooth paper mache. Um, there's different types, you can do clay, you can add flour. I've been figuring it out and I've been learning a lot about paper mache, but I potentially have not got time in the next couple of days to start the paper mache in. 
I've got some client work that I need to finish off from last month. So I'm almost up to date with my client work. Once I'm up to date, I'll be able to work on this project full time, but I've got to put the Photoshop time in. So it means that I'm sat at my desk wishing that I was a paper machine. <laughs> I'm practicing patience with myself and I've been practicing patience with myself about this project and my creative life in general. I kind of thought that that related to kind of my artistic journey a little bit, where my concepts have derived from, how I've managed patience over the years and just I kind of was like having a bit of a reflective moment this morning thinking you know all those times that I was rushing myself and making myself feel bad for not working on my project not working on my art yet I still managed to get a lot of work done and I've gained a style that has proved how much work I put in. I've had this sketchbook about 10 years or so and this is where I ended up putting all of my ideas into over the years and a lot of those ideas actually went into the sketchbook whether they were like scribbles or a little bit more in-depth drawings or you know whatever you'll see in a moment what I mean some of those ideas came to life and I'd love to just show you a flip through of my sketchbook now so that you can see my progression and what I've been up to and how an idea in my head goes down onto a paper and then gets made So this is a idea that I had for a flower hoop, but instead of the flowers, I decided to go for leaves. So I went and collected some from the woods and it was like autumn at the time. So I really wanted to create this like amazing arch hoop that like encapsulated my face. Something that I really enjoyed doing because I had my little hand coming in from the side and um, holding the delicate leaf in front of my eye. I've always loved stars, so I'm going to pop on some images that I created using stars. Now these two images, this one and this one, were created for a video idea that I did a few years ago called Instagram Controls My Self Portrait. Different elements of the image was decided by my followers on Instagram. I wanted the idea of like a bird or a bird that's fallen and I was in this like greeny, greenery foresty area so I had the feathers falling from, falling from my back or as though they'd just been plucked. This idea is an idea that I had for a levitating shot. I'd never done levitation before so I decided to give it a go. Um, this was for a 52 week project that I did. I had a story that I wanted to create um, and I think this is where my, my love for sets started. Um, I didn't actually create this story at the time. I felt like it was unfinished but it kind of felt like a growth moment when I was like storyboarding this. This is where Paint Your Thoughts was thought up. I had to storyboard this so that I knew which parts of the image to shoot um, and which parts of the image to repeat or recreate um, so that I could edit it all together. This is where the levitation shot was storyboarded so I knew what to shoot and how to get it to where it was. Um, I know there's a lot of things that I would probably do different on this now but it was interesting to see where my brain was taking me when I was creating the idea. I had this idea at a similar time to this idea because I wanted to levitate in this one but I didn't actually shoot this idea until the seven day self portrait challenge a few years later um, but I didn't levitate in the end. Again I don't think my drawing skills are great but I wanted to you know create an idea that I could show Jack because he had to come along and help me shoot this. It was about a night terror that I had. This was an idea that I had with ribbons, so I wanted ribbons flowing all around the image. These are ideas that I had for a client shoot, which I did with Bang Bang Romeo. So these are just sketches for that. This is an idea that I had when I had some terrible eczema at the time. And I just remember drawing all these dots all over this paper. That's what I felt like was all over my skin. I ended up shooting it quite raw and I actually stuck little stickers all over my body. I don't know if you remember on this channel, but I created a beat a few years ago 
And this is actually the image that I created my yellow project outfit for. So this was the existing idea that I created that for. I absolutely loved shooting this image. I knew exactly what I wanted to do. And I had this drum that I got from charity shop. Then I had all this water flowing out the side of it. So this is going back to the idea of the leaves. For one of my seven day self portrait challenges, I created a board with loads of holes in. So my seven day self portrait challenge, I was getting more in depth with my ideas, a bit more specific with what I was doing. So this was the red pepper one. An idea that I had with a little tiny leaf flying all around me. This is actually an idea that evolved into just a portrait because I had this snake. So it was like a plastic snake that I bought um, and it wasn't able to be manipulated around my arm. So I decided just to do it with my head and Photoshop it in, as you can see. And I'm actually working on a, a painting of that one too in the studio. So this is Seven Deadly Sins, the Seven Days Self Portrait Challenge that I did. And then this is where I sort of transitioned into 2020 time when I did a sleep on fruit. So I shot an image with a banana and then I wanted to carry it on into a series, but it didn't feel right at that point. I felt it a bit, a bit too limited and a bit too stagnant. I felt like it could, it could have gotten quite boring very quickly for me. And then I created a flow project. In fact, that's something that I think I'm gonna pick back up this project because I absolutely loved it. But now I've got the studio, I feel like I can be a bit more, I can control it a little bit better. So I feel like that's something that I'm gonna bring back soon. This is an image that I did for my Adobe Live. This is some brainstorming ideas that I had for a Skittles project that I was working on and I wanted to bring in colour and this is when I kind of got a bit of a kick for colour and that could be one of the ideas that actually kicked off my colour project so thanks partly to Skittles for commissioning that image from me because it helped me decide what I wanted to do with the next project. So these are the second parts of the pink and the blue project which I edited for my Adobe Live a few weeks ago um, I've not finished them yet, but I had my sketchbook open for one last time to create these ideas and I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's time to put this sketchbook away and I'm just happy that I got to fill it over the years.